I'm aware of the lull. I'm aware I of the lull. I hope you're recording right now. Yeah. Trust me, Narod. I know my whole life of the lull, as you called it. So eloquently. Someone should give me a trophy. So eloquently. For as you the put month it. of December. Oh, yeah. I would like to have it delivered in bronze, gold, platinum, whatever the best is that they make. Well, and I'd like know? it to be on my door. How I'm do you like, not know what's the difference? What's the best? I want it made of emeralds. How's that? Okay. You're such a big baby when it comes to the holidays. Like, what can we do for you, Tommy? Nothing. What can we do for you? Trust me, you nail it all the time. <laughs> you nail it. You and don't. I nail it, you mean no, ruin it. No, I no, ruin no, listen, the we're holidays. Good. We're good. We're no. Good. Can you at least attest to that this year has been better? Yeah, sure. So far, so good. Yeah, absolutely. A beautiful Christmas. Look, man, I got a healthy kid. I got a healthy, happy wife. I'm good, bro. I bust you both. You have birthday month. Okay. Well, we just established in this room that there's an inherent lull. That happens between Christmas and New Year's. <laughs> you know what else happens between Christmas and New Year's? Your birthday. My birthday. Hey, Dirties, welcome back to another episode. This is our New Year's resolutions episode, right, Tommy? Yeah. We're going to talk about everything that we want in 2022. And before we do that, you guys, we have a story to tell, okay? Since my cousins were visiting, we had the ability to go, Tommy and I, out at night, venture out because we had an in-house babysitter, my cousin Ziba. We had the opportunity, a very rare opportunity yeah. to go out, just the put two it, of us. Put it this way, and Zeb is one of the few, there's a very, very slim few that we would trust. The last real date night that we probably had... That I flew her cousin Zeba down for the night you to watch so the kid. Fancy. We went to the Mary J and Nas concert. Nas, yeah, in the house. Hollywood Bowl. Queens that time we had a good night. I didn't throw any temper tantrums. No, that was and a great time. Leave. Yeah, it was we a came great time. together. We left together. Six seats. That was a great time. So you guys, the last time that we've had a date night out was two years and four months ago. Yeah, without the kid. Yes. So we're the type of parents that if we go somewhere, we go with our kid. And if it's not appropriate for a child, then one of us stays home with the child and the well, other one goes. That she, that's not, if it's not appropriate, she goes. You know what I mean? I, I Nine out of ten times would much rather just stay home. I mean, so this time Tommy and I go to Jeff Lewis's Christmas party. So we get up into our Christmas outfits, which is a red dress, the one I got from Amazon, as a matter of fact. For those of you sidetrack who are following my Amazon lives, thank you for your support. I actually met my goal for the month of December. Is that cheesy to share that? I'm just proud of it. You should be. Anytime you reach goals, you should be proud of them. I wear a red dress, beautiful, bright red dress. I got it from my Amazon storefront. A black rancher hat from Lack of Color Australia, and my wasn't feeling it. You didn't like the red hat, the, the black hat. Hair? No, the hat. The hat was nice, but I definitely did not. I, I didn't like to get up to go to the, like where you were going. You were going to like a, someone's house party. Where you fucking? It wasn't a Kentucky Derby. Like, wait, put the hat in the closet. What are you doing? But whatever. Because my hair wasn't dr- done. Oh, that's true. It was because yeah, my hair was true. My, that's true. My tapins were coming out. That's true. And I wore red suede bows on my feet. Like my shoes were big red bows. This is like the ninth or tenth time that you've mentioned bows on the pair of shoes that you wore. Oh. Uh, but I think everyone out there oh, understands yeah. you're a big proponent <laughs> of having bows on your feet. The, and, and the last thing, you know, bows are typically on gifts. The last thing that your feet are is a gift to anybody. Thanks. Don't mention it. Your outfit sucks compared to mine. <laughs> I had nothing to fit, man. You oh, came man. out, you that, guys. That day, like right before, there's a, an Italian deli out here that is excellent. There's not a bunch of them. There's one that I fucking know, and it's excellent. It reminds me of back home, and it's next to where I get my hair cut. That only happens, you know, once every, you know, three weeks maybe. I get my hair cut, and I'll go get a sandwich that's like... You know, like you a should glutton go sandwich. more often. So I had gone to get my hair cut, had the sandwich, stuffed my big fat fucking face, came home, and I couldn't find my wallet. So then the next day, mm-hmm. I went back to get my wallet, 
And, I mean, the Italian deli's there again. It didn't go out of business. It's there. And it's open. So, you know, I stuffed my face with another sandwich right before we were leaving to go to this party, dude. Like, the the buttons on on any shirt I tried on would take your eye out. You know, they were just ready to... The the shirt was holding on for dear life. You know, and it just was not a good look, dude. Okay, so... Your outfit was terrible, and I don't know. Do you need clothes, or what's the deal with your wardrobe situation? Well, I don't have cocktail party clothes, bro. It's not me, dude. That's not how I how but I go around. It's not my modus operandi when I go around walk around town. It's not how I dress. If it was like you know, jean and mind you. There was four or five people in the place that had jeans and what de- they were comfortable. I wore blue shoes, which I fucking hate to wear shoes. I wore shoes and I wore dress slacks and I wore a cashmere sweater and a fucking sports jacket. I looked like fucking Thurston Howell the third from fucking uh, Gilligan's Island. Well, I was dressed like the fucking millionaire. Uh, when there's other people walking around the house, there was they were more than comfortable. Your New Year's resolution should be to get your closet straight. I'll nip it in the bud. My New Year's resolutions: no more cocktail parties. No, you could just look no, nice wearing a sweater I'm and good. jeans. No, for like you know levels of hell, like Dante's Inferno. There's levels of hell for. for, for well, everyone knows. Yeah. One of my levels of hell would be go to a cocktail party where you don't really know anybody and we were worse. They know you. Yeah, nightmarish. And our marching orders before we went into the house, babe, don't leave me. Babe, don't leave me. Oh, sure. No problem. It's me and you, babe. It's me. Gone. We walk into the door. It's gone like a shot. Like she didn't even know I fucking existed. She was gone. And I was left to fend for myself. It was awful. Beautiful view. One of the nicest views. I've been in some nice houses in the city. And that's a, that was the fucking, that was noise. So first they had a they had a male stripper come. The guy looked <laughs> like he just got out of county. Like Jeff was his bail bondsman. You know what I mean? That's great. That was a lot of fun. Uh, you know, she's like, you're looking like you want to get out of here. No, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Babe, can't wait to get out of here. All right, cool. You go get the car, pull up out front, and then wait for me. I'm just going to go say a couple of goodbyes. All right, babe. Sounds fucking great. An hour and a half later. Sure. She gets walked to the car. <laughs> like she was like, she just won a topless, uh, was a wet t-shirt contest. It's on spring break. You're know, like, she's doing body shots. She gets warm <laughs> escorted to the car from a cocktail party. And she said, like, Oh yeah. Hi. With a straggler. She had another one with her. We had to drive home. Babe, where does she live? <laughs> no, really? Where's that? You make two rights and a left to get the, <laughs> now you got the, what? Yeah, the other one. She was. <laughs> this was she was actually really story. awesome, man. She's just lawyer. She's awesome. She was a Stanford graduate, super smart lady. She was shit faced too. And I'm gonna twist it. There was but, like uh, fruit all over the back seat of the car. What yeah, was that about? Who like, the fuck knows, bro? <laughs> who the fruit. fuck knows? Loose fruit. Who the fuck knows? Like the man. kind of fruit that came from the top of like a cake. Needless to say, <laughs> at the back. I get in the car the next day. That's why we have been like, on a date night in two and a half it years. Smell rotten. <laughs> It was like it stank. Yeah. And it was like the kiwi with the frosting on it. <laughs> oh, that was you? Yeah, you brought the cake. You came in, you opened the door, and said the, the guy the guy that escorts you, this is... <laughs> you, you didn't know what his name was? You didn't know what his name was? So you're like, this is my husband. And hi, Tommy, this is... <laughs> and you fucking started eating like some <laughs> jellied up cake. And then the chick out in the back seat, you offered her a bite, <laughs> and she said no, and you just dumped it in the back seat. All right, Casey, Casey, I hung it on the way home. You know, there's some, <laughs> there's some floor kiwi. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Some puffs too. I thought that was her. Yeah, I thought that was her. Yeah, it's great. It's a great time. Can't wait to go back. Can't wait to do one of those again. I was like, the lawyer left some of the dessert on the ground. Yeah, can't wait to go. Okay, so we walk into the party, and the first thing that Tommy says, "This is my worst nightmare." (laughs) Fuck, bro! Literally (laughs) walked right in. You basically walk into the party, and you can see the whole party because it's a big. Beautiful Leah Black's house from Real Housewives of Miami. She's hosting the party at her and her husband's house. And the whole living room is one giant space. 
and you can like see from the far side of the front the front entrance you could see the the party like piano bar people beautiful place and then he's like don't leave me I'm My like, worst where idea. am i going to go to leave she, you how can i leave you she figured it's, out a way it's all in one she, group she, like the whole party was one cluster there she goes. There it was she one goes. cluster of humans yeah then she goes see you later and then we had rapid testing that we had to do before we went in to make sure and everyone had to have their cards and everything to show that they're fully vaxxed so like it wasn't a super spreader event and it was like about 25 people 25 30 people so you walk in and i'm like where am i gonna leave you there's nowhere for me to go oh she figured everyone out everyone here she figured is out dying to meet you tommy and dying to see <laughs> it's even you. worse. It's not my scene, man. You know what I'm so saying? So you have social anxiety. Well, I don't know what the fuck you want to call it. I definitely have. Yo, my wife should not leave. My wife shouldn't bounce. And my wife bounced. No, the second like we got I in went there, from this out. side of the piano to that side of the piano. With 10 people in between you. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something so I left your gone. side, but That's why don't... Gone. That's gone. See you know, you like, so you're at a party and you're hanging out and then someone will like walk up to you and you just, what am I supposed to do? Ignore them? They came to oh, us no, you, and said you hi. You will work in the room, kid. You will work. <laughs> no. You could have, oh, look who it is. Oh, my God, girl. Uh, a whole bunch of that. <laughs> and you could have slivered your way, sashayed nah, over. Yeah, no, I, I slivered. I and sli sashayed. I slivered enough. I'm good. Did you sit sashay? I can guarantee you, like I said, it's, it's going to be the last cocktail party for quite some time. No. Long story short, maybe my new resolution for us should be to plan better date nights, if any. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll work on it. You work on your wardrobe. <laughs> I'll work on Don't worry. date night. So you know what this reminds me? When you're making your New Year's resolutions and your goals, I can probably be married to you for 75 years because there will always be marriage goals if I'm married to you. Yeah, there should be. There should be goals always. Everybody should have goals. But like, I have to step up my game. I have to step it up because I have failed. We are way too far in December and I have not made you feel like it is birthday month. <laughs> It's just ridiculous. We are grown-ups. We have so much to do. Do you hear yourself? You know what? You Why literally, can't we just appreciate you, your birthday on you literally June 29th a birthday instead? Month. You require birthday month. Okay. You don't even tell people what your real actual birthday. It's a gender bias. It's a gender bias. What? It's one of the perks of being a woman. That uh, you fucking girls live longer than we do. Yeah. yeah. And you got so you get your birthdays have to be celebrated more. We should be happy that we're getting to another one. But this should be a parade I mean, for not... us. We should fucking we should we do so we should do some more than that. All right. Yeah, all right. There's a lull that week. Can I ask you a there's question? A lull. For your birthday, don't you think I have something nice planned? No, I don't. You don't? I don't. I do. I, I don't. have I have a nice dinner plan. Oh, okay, great. Well, last year was cool. Last year we Sienna and a mother came over and Yeah. That was cool in a in a pandemic. It was all right. Yeah. Like I said, I like the mustard chops, bro. I, I, and <laughs> I'm used to it. This is long before you were ever even in the equation. We also had Do you understand? Like, I was never able to have the, you know. Nard, the, can you play some, like, violin music? I was never able to have, like, the, <laughs> and going back to school. You know what I mean? School, you get nobody the kids brought, the No one made in. cupcakes because yeah, you couldn't do it. School is closed. School is closed. Yeah, school my birthday closed. was in the summer, so I never had that either, honey. Yeah, but it's fucking summer. At least you're out of, you know, like there's a lot going on. Can we on. get this story on track? Because you're right. it's not about your birthday once yet again. <laughs> yeah, because totally. I'm aware. New Year's is about resolutions, about renewing yourself to your core. And yeah, it's also looking back over the last year to kind of make sure that if you had goals, if you had things that you wanted to get done, did you get those things done? And looking forward to the new year, what are we going to... Can I ask you a question? What are we going to knock out this year? There was a phase in my life that I was really, really jaded and disenfranchised and disenchanted and like Me just... Too. I didn't care because like... All my life, New Year's were awesome. I would make my resolutions during Thanksgiving weekend, and I was like, ooh, ooh, like, ooh, teacher, teacher, pick me, pick me. Like, I was so pumped about everything in life. And then I'm sure the correlation is obvious. It was when my dad wasn't started to decline. That's when I stopped caring about everything. I became a nihilist. I cared about nothing. So now again, for the first time in a long time, 
I'm so You realize you were with me through all these pumped. through all this time. That's yes. like that that's what we meant. So you can't about nothing. It is. <laughs> and you're right. Yeah. So do you think you that say the sweetest your things, baby? Gonna... <laughs> you really do. No, but that wasn't my fault or your fault. Yeah, just what happened. No, listen, I, I listen. It, hey, you know, like you, that's part of the reason why I settled down too. I mean, whatever. I mean, a woman. I mean, I'm not. You know, come on. Finally, I needed to. I know it took me long enough because I didn't meet you sooner. We should have met in our thirties. What do you think? Sure, I was in my thirties. Like early. There was a time when I was off the whole. Let's make New Year's resolutions thing. I was off it. Like, I just wasn't into it. I was jaded. I was disinterested. It seemed boring. I'm always been a, actually a big proponent of New Year's, but I think for a lot of my life that was kind of misguided because I, I agree with you. I think that when you say, I'm going to make this as a resolution New Year, you'd be doing it already. I think that's why, like, all those diets fail, shit like that. Like, if you, I, I'm going to wait till the New Year, I'm going to make that a resolution. But now we're positive. But now it's not a resolution for me. Now it's more about a personal inventory. It's, a lifestyle it's looking, yeah, it's looking back at the last year and it's more goals centric resolution is like throwing a coin in a wishing well there's nothing really behind it when you map out goals and you plan to you know you set deadlines and you have to take daily steps to reach goals it's different than a resolution i feel like we are out of that funk i'm excited for the first time i feel invigorated to make goals last year you said we're going to pick a book that we're going to read as a couple and we didn't do that well why because you I did didn't it. do it. Yep. I had to read fucking uh, that uh, sh the horrible book about the fucking woman cleaning a room. Marie Kondo. Yeah, whatever it was. Like, you know, so I had to we a kept our resolutions for I one. I just made me waste it. But listen, I set goals too for myself that I kind of came up short. My goal, I had a goal to read 100 books. I read, you know, barely 60. I think I'm at like 54, 55. Well, that's 53 more than I read. But it's still a lot shorter than Marie where I meant to be. I don't think the Marie Kondo book counts as reading a book. It's still a lot shorter than where so I you guys. We, we but made... yes, you definitely did not follow through with that at all. We got like, you know, three months in. So Tommy gave me January of 21 last year. You gave me this deck of cards, which was like promise that we were going to do a date night every Wednesday. And you're like, we're going to pick from this deck <laughs> and either. we're going to talk once a week about any either. topic. We never, never did, did that. Either. That was on you too. Oh, you, you got it for me option. as like a stocking stuffer. You had the option. You never did it either. Mm. You had the option. It's your deck well, of cards. How would Tuesday I do it between you? all the games and the sports and the fantasy Tuesday drafts? Tuesday nights were yours. That's why you just said Tuesday. It's not, it, That's what I said. Tuesday nights were yours. There's no games on Tuesday. Oh, you never God. did it. You'd rather talk. Talk on the phone with your cousin Diva. You'd rather to shoot the shit with Brandon. Should we add it to rather... this year's resolutions? It's not a resolution, bro. What is it called then? Goals? No, that's just something that you would want to do. Is that something you'd like to do? We could do it on a Tuesday night. I don't have no problem with it. Okay, well, I'm excited that, okay, even though I didn't make a big deal out of your birthday yet, I think that by the time your birthday rolls around... I'm going to knock your socks off, honey. It's not necessary, Have some faith. babe. It's just, it's funny to me at this point. Like I said, Narod Apadusa was <laughs> in the room and she <laughs> said, you know, there's a natural lull that's between <laughs> Christmas and, the, and New Year's. Well. Because everybody knows it. Hmm. It's like, it's a common occurrence. There's nothing you're going to be able to do on my birthday this year that's not going to make me, it's overcome a lifetime of, you know the lull. Yeah, motherfucker. I'm aware. I'm aware of the low. It's actually a really good time in your life to regroup, reset. Imagine if the calendar was January and then after December, there was like a different word for that month and we never had a 12-year calendar. Imagine that every day it just became like January 4,079, 2 million and 3. What? At least we get New Year's in order to renew based on the calendar. Yeah. Did you know the Persian calendar is not the exact same thing as January 1st yeah, through where? December there's, 31st? Yeah, have a different New Year, absolutely. No, the there's... Ruse. A, yeah, it's different months and all that yeah. stuff. Yeah, that second time that you said it was way more coherent than the first time you said it. Mm -hmm. The first time you said it, and I'm like, <laughs> what the fuck did you just say? So you reeled I it in a little bit, and yeah, you got... What the, I'm saying is I feel really excited to reset, set new goals... 
I feel inspired. I feel like I have faith in myself. I I had lost that for a while. You did a lot of amazing things I for feel yourself this year. Like I want to have goals. Like I feel motivated and I feel like I'm creating incentives. Like you well, as you a, a husband is you have No, a kid. it's also it's the important. way that you it's are like you're happier and you come up to me and you'll be like we're doing this. And then you'll be like, I just read this and I want us to do this now. It's because I have this feeling that my partner, my husband is not lights on nobody's home or disenchanted or like I feel like you really give a shit too. And because I think that we're both in a good headspace, that we both know that we're both on board for like leveling up in our lives. And if like if we were a couple where one of us was in the corner of like the pool drowning and smoking crock and passing out and the other one was like hard at work and like calling ass doing great things that's not a good dynamic but i would still want to invite that couple to a party because they sound <laughs> that would be hilarious to hang out with one, the one's a crackhead the other one's working hard that usually does yeah not. one's usually. a doctor the other one's a crackhead yeah, man sometimes but so if we're all talking about like resetting for a new year I'm excited to reset with you because you're cool. You inspire me now. Like there was a period of our marriage where I don't think that you and I were on the same train. Definitely not. I know for me, you know, I've taken a lot of personal inventory for myself and uh, when my son was born. We'll get up to when we, the whole process and whatnot, but I didn't think it was really going to happen until it happened. And then he was here and he's like, he's exceptional. Even even when I got pregnant? Yeah, it just still never, you know what I mean? It's just still, you know, then the next thing you know, he's here. And he's a light, dude. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's a special kid. You I want his dad to be special, say, you too. You and my mom always... You want his dad to be special. Yeah. That's his dad sweet. should be special, too. You know what I mean? His mother should be special, too. You talk about how you didn't believe it, and now I can't have any more babies. I always wonder, like, do you want more, or are we just happy with the one that we have because we could barely, like... I don't even know where my receipts are from, like, my life. Like, it's important to just stay focused on managing what you have right because when you say you didn't think it was going to happen it makes me think like whenever you say you never thought ivf works i'm like oh so you didn't ever thought it was going to work so you never thought we were going to have a baby now that we do do you want more no i'm good i I'm agree in the moment i'm I in the agree. moment me I got, too I, we got a special kid he's, especially he's special how disorganized i am i love him to death another baby you know this world? but he's also like a born adult he's real independent he's real good He's real obedient. There's some other kids out there that are fucking nightmares. You know what I mean? I like I don't I don't know how to handle that. I don't have that problem. Like he's had, you know, every now and then he'll have a tantrum. More kids too. But for the most part, he's real easy going. So I'm you want to be a good daddy. Yeah, that's what's important to me. I just wanna, like I said, he's a real special kid. He should have special parents. And we're in a position that uh, we have a platform and we have advantages that, quite frankly, a lot of people out there don't have. So if we could use those advantages to bring some light into the world, not to sound like a cheese ball, but, you know, if we could use that to make a difference in a positive direction, that's everlasting, bro. I think about that, too. Like when I'm doing something real estate related or... You know, if I'm doing something where I'm out in the street representing you and my son and, you know, my mother and like, you know, like when you when you reflect when I'm dead, what are people going to look back and say, like, I don't want to be morbid, but like even like when our son is 15 or 25 and he's introducing his parents to the woman he wants to marry, are we going to be the parents that he's going to be like proud to invite? Are we going to be like vacationing together with like the other parents, like his in-laws, you know what I mean? Like, I want us to be like, so stand up that he's going to be super proud of his parents. Well, let me tell you, let me give you an example of what I'd like in the big picture. Today, just now, when I went to send the books at the post office, when I went in there, there was one person in front of me. Now, it takes a long time to send those books. I'm going to start crying. No, you're not. Oh. But I went in there... <laughs> And uh, there was someone in front of me. And when I went in there, that was it. There was one person in front of me, three people working. Then I went up and I like, I caused the whole place to take a while. It's right after Christmas. There's people that return and shit. So before you know long, there's a long ass line. Because you were dropping off those books? Yeah. 
and someone was grumbling. Oh, I couldn't do that. You know, I can't, you, like you could what hear it. What the fuck does that mean, though? You could hear the grumbling. You're doing your job. You're dropping off books. No, they don't know that though. They don't know that is what I'm saying to you. Like someone was grumbling about that I was taking all this fucking time. Someone else in the line said, well, he sends books to kids. <gasps> I told you I was going to cry. That's what he's doing. And if <laughs> I get that, I'm good. I told you I'm going to cry. I'm good. So, so the other person already knew what you do. Yes. Why did you lie to me and say I wasn't going to cry? You just made me emotional. I hate you so much. <laughs> you didn't think you were going to get emotional telling me that? No, but uh, it was cool. It was cool. So that's so, what I'm saying. So oh. I got a kid. That, uh, ah, mm. <laughs> we're going to be in demand parents. We're going to be ah. in demand in-laws. People are going to, people are going to be like, who can we find that we can find for Shams? Because we want to be linked up to the fight family. Yeah. I just want him to be the proud of himself. I want to be proud of himself. I want to be proud of his parents. And uh, I want him to do good when he can, when no one's looking. That makes me feel very good about not fucking up this boy and doing on the contrary a really good job he's good man it's us we're the we problem. can't fuck it up you know what i mean like he's like i said there's a light that emanates from my kid that believe me you know he's special i really believe he's gonna grow up and do great and special things if we don't fuck it up so, you know, it's an on us to step our game up. What in terms of New Year's resolution and New Year's? Can we talk about New Year's Eve for a second? Sure. All right. So all my life, New Year's Eve has been the most anticipated night of the year. Are, who are you kissing at midnight? Are you going to have a date on midnight? Are you going to bump into him at the party? Is he going to be at the other party? What am I going to wear? What's the party? Whose balls am I dropping? <laughs> Whose uh, balls dropping? On what me? city in the world yeah. am I going to be? Will I end up in like New York or LA or Greece or Ibiza or wherever like in the world? Like we'd be on Paris at the Light Eiffel Tower. Like it is the most highly anticipated night of the year and yet the most dud. Overrated. No, man. I've had, a pre- I've had a couple of good. Well, I'll give you that. I think it's more bang than buck. So, yes, I totally agree with what you're saying that more often than not, it's more noise than anything. But I've had a, f- a few good New Year's. I can't lie. The, the one that you and I had together, our first New Year's was real fun. When we dominated in charades, when we embarrassed everybody in oh, charades. Oh, no. It was our first New Year's. Yes. And as a couple, we had a cute little party yes. spontaneously. Yes. How, how many hours in advance did we plan it? Like, we literally just decided, like, halfway through the day. Yeah, it was, again, it was like, you know, gaggle of misfits. Like, do you guys, people that didn't have other plans that were kind of orphaned. Yeah, Golnasa wanted to be, she was like, why don't you just have a party at your house? And so we did. And it was super fun. Yeah, no, it was a good time, like I said, and went late. Um, and, and we, we dominated in charades. And it was then great. we went to two different places and then we came back to my house again and played charades at like four o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Um, and then we had that one, the new year's where we went to, what was it? Boa with your oh, mother, with my mom. And we would do, like, we would just, it's a wrap dude. Like one year we went to STK, which is you guys, like if you know, STK, it's always a hot spot, no matter what city it's in, especially like this year. If you had a ticket, a rezzo at STK, your New Year's was going to be popping. Kanye might be there. Like, you just never know. And so we ended up, because we knew the manager. The Kanye's there. It's, that means it's a happy New Year. I don't know. <laughs> like, Jay-Z might have been there. He was like in the next booth okay. with Bay. That would have made my new year, right? What the fuck? I mean, you would have rolled up to to. You're a star fucker. No, you would have rolled you're up to Jay Z. Yeah, maybe if he was next in the booth next to me. I mean, yeah, I listen to music, buddy. Thanks, you're great. High five. But that's it. That's it. No, like I'm not looking to fucking like. We can, were, I, can we be friends now? Can there we go was on just, lunch? My point is that the <laughs> one year that we went, you to, and your mother are both star fuckers. That's it. That's the point. My it's all point right. Is, if Darth Vader thought she saw someone famous, she would bolt at them. My point is, though. Tell me, I'm wrong. What was it? Who'd she do? It? Who'd she do that to? Everyone. Yes. Yeah. So <laughs> no, my who, my who, who is it? My point is that the year that we had this like amazing, tremendous location, and all of our closest friends were all coming, yeah. and then 
something happens that night and it's just like the champagne doesn't give you a good buzz. It felt cold. You couldn't get into it. I just felt like I had to force you myself. You turned into a stiff. Yes, I was like you really. turned into a stiff. I was just not fu- having a good time at all. I couldn't get out of it. And I felt like at 12 o'clock or by 1235 that I just wanted to go home. Yeah, you were stiff that night. Your friend Nick had, had set it all up. We had carte blanche. She was the manager. Like we were, we were in a real good spot. And uh, what happened? Yeah, you just you were not feeling it. And I, you don't ever have to twist my arm to go home from something like that. So it's like, all right, let's. But I remember your mother was pissed, bro. She was ready to rage. I think she dropped ecstasy. She was ready she to was. fucking party she had up. Like a cigar in yeah, her mouth. Yeah, she was ready to party she up. Had a bro. champagne popper. She was raising the roof and shit. And we then were making her, her like, say, yeah, we're leaving. She was like, what? She was rapping. What? Yeah, her top was about to come off. I'm pretty sure. We have the video. Yeah, man. She was bent that we had to leave. I mean, she could have stayed, but she didn't she didn't know who was gonna get her home or whatnot. So it turned into a little bit of a thing, but then we left. All I know is that New Year's Eve this year, we're gonna do something wild. Wild? What are we gonna do? Go to bed at 10? What are we gonna do? That wouldn't be wild. What are we gonna do? We'll make it so I don't know. Now that we're talking about it, I'm gonna make sure. Oh yeah? Yeah. Uh uh. All right, so before we get back into the episode, they're actually leaving today and the kids were dying to say something to you folks. So uh without further ado, this is Layla and Isla, MJ's nieces. We've got special guests here this week that's visiting from up north. Probably the brightest light that can light up my heart outside of my son is the closest seconds, Layla and Isla. Okay, you guys, say hello. 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 Introduce yourselves, please. Uh, My name's Layla, and I am 11. My name's Isla, and I'm 8. Okay, Tom. Tom has a question for you guys. What are your girls' New Year's resolutions? To, like, keep my grades where they are because I'm getting good grades. So That's awesome. Isla? Well, maybe I would get better in school and stuff because if I'm not good at, like, a subject, then... I would, like, get better at it. Or, like, like over the break, I can try to, like, ch- do something new, and I'll get better at it. I love that for you. Okay. Ziva, yeah, come mom. in. It's mom. Just to get you caught up and everybody who's listening, this is my rock, my best friend, my flesh and blood, my cousin, my everything. You were in the wedding, at the wedding. Your daughters were the flower girls. Literally every single night... After the kids go down, she and I, if we're lucky, will have an opportunity to speak on a daily basis before we turn in, right, and go to sleep. So since you're here visiting for the holiday, I just wanted to make sure that we get it popping. Hey, guys. Hi. Hi. I love you. I'm glad to be here. Oh, I'm Ziba, Mears' cousin, first cousin, and we're happy to be here and happy to spend Christmas time with you guys. Shams and Tommy. <laughs> she really freezes up into a different person. Like she was like Tommy, 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 what are you thinking right now? <laughs> are you locking your head? Yes, very much so. Very much, uh, I thought the show was, was over. <laughs> Is this the outtakes? <laughs> oh, God. All right. Have a safe trip, girls. Let's jump back into the episode. So we uh, asked you guys what your resolutions were as well, and we got some of them. I could talk about New Year's resolutions for the rest of my life, and here is what you said. Beth Hazel O2 says... Be more present. Yeah, I'm a present. Oh, you mean be more present. Like in the room? As in off your phone when we're driving in the car, because you do that a lot when I'm driving, and then you don't keep company me or serenade me. Serenade you? You want me to sit there and sing to you? As a matter of fact, I got no problem doing that. I like nothing less. I would have no problem singing to you. Write it down. Next time we're in the car, I promise... I'm going to sing my heart out to you. Okay, so Destiny.hm says lose weight. 
Yeah, don't we all? I mean, we've been trying. Tommy, I promised myself I was going to lose 30 pounds by January 2nd. I think I've lost like, I don't know. And then <laughs> Landia <laughs> underscore Tana, go to school to better myself. <sighs> That's a you good one. You did that this year. Well, yeah. I mean, that's a good one in general. I think that it's always good to learn. Yeah. Bettering yourself, for sure. You could put that on your bathroom mirror. Be better. Vanessa, VMR1124, she's, she's going to get back in shape. That's her goal, and to get back out there on the dating scene. So basically, Ooh. she's looking to get out there and chase some pickles. She's, she uh-huh. wants to join us with the pickle chases. We have a t-shirt for her. Can yeah. we put that on our Layla, that on our you got a jacket for this broad? Oh what size God. does she wear? Shout out Layla Garache. Yeah. Yeah. We've Layla's got a new member of the Pickle Chaser Ooh. Club. Ooh. Raise Ooh. the roof. Well, Layla hasn't had any unless she got some in Mexico. I mean, fingers crossed. <laughs> totally. Who doesn't want like a extraordinary encounter in the beautiful tropical area of Mexico where she was? <laughs> Who doesn't? My wife does, certainly. Or a gondola driver, you know. When you go backpacking in a Europe. gondola driver, that's like you say you want to have a cab driver? Uh, it's like you want to go to New York and, and have a cab driver? Banging a, that's like, because that's like going to Italy and get banged by a, a gondolier. It's the same thing. No, there's only like a small canal. They're very narrow. There's only like six gondoliers in the entire area of Venice, Italy. There's only six on the boats? There's There's more than than that in Vegas. So tell me the name of the girl that's going to get back out there. Vanessa's the one that's going to get out there and looking for the souls each. Hey, Vanessa, listen, we've all been in that phase of our life where... It's just been sparse and like you just, you're not meeting guys. You're not being approached by someone that you're into. You might be experiencing intimacy shyness. Sounds like dryness. (laughs) You should get that checked out. (laughs) Is that something you can put a cream on? You said her name is Denise? (laughs) No, the nephew. But I'm bumped. I said her name was Vanessa three times. Three times. Vanessa, I've gone through this. I know I have. There's periods where you're like not comfortable being naked around other people. I don't think that that's what this is about. Like I said, she just wants to get back in shape. She wants to go back on the dating scene. She wants to, you know, she wants to go back out there. No, I mean, sometimes you need like sometimes you're high on your body confidence and other times we're not as high on our body confidence. How we feel about our bodies is also linked to intimacy and sexual intimacy and just our comfort level ebbs and flows of being you know cool being naked around another person huida underscore my new year's resolution is to set clear boundaries with people and let people know when i am uncomfortable i never trust my gut feeling at first so i let things go too often and that is about to change. Mm. Sounds like she's about to lay the smack down this year. She's about to let people know that's not how shit's going to work anymore. I respect that. I definitely have to always draw boundaries because I don't want to be somebody's spineless jellyfish. Yeah, nobody does. You know, you have to draw boundaries all the time with the people that you love. And you have to draw boundaries with your bosses. You have to draw boundaries with your freaking neighbors. Like, it's just a skill. I think if there's a book about it, Tommy, I'd like to read it. For sure, there's a book about How to draw it is. boundaries properly. Yeah, there's definitely a hundred books. We'll get back to you on some recommendations <laughs> and I might read one or two myself. <laughs> yeah, no, she's not. Just to let you know, she's not going to read that book. So you're going to have to go do the legwork. But I saw an interesting one here, too. This is Plant-Based Sweetheart. Hi. First off, you guys love your pod. Thank you very much. Um, Thank you, Plant-Based. My New Year's resolution is to stop putting myself in uncomfortable situations to make other people comfortable and actually say how I feel instead of being worried that I'm going to hurt their feelings. First off, we know we have a long-standing rule in this house. A closed mouth don't get fed. You better speak up. We agree with you. Say what's on your mind. She said that she wants to start speaking up. Pretty much. Because the past two years, I realized a lot of people around me do and say whatever makes them comfortable and happy. And they don't give two shits about anyone. When confronted and nobody wants to reflect or take accountability. So I'm not putting up with that shit in the new year. 
Okay, okay, okay. I got this one. I used to do this all the time. Seven habits of highly effective people. The word is learn to say no. You want to make people happy. You want to say yes to people. You don't want to let people down. You don't want to disappoint them. So you're like, they'll be like, hey, can you give me a ride to the airport at 5 a.m. on Saturday morning, June 2nd? And you're like, fuck no. But like for some reason, yeah, no, you ain't doing like that shit. Don't say the you're the type gonna... of person that's clearly saying, "Oh, okay, yeah, I you're, can do that." Don't, yeah, don't. You're not the type of person that would ever be like, "Yeah, I will pick you up at the airport." I would be like, and you, <laughs> <laughs> "Not if you want to get yeah, there." Seriously, you might change your People number. People know better. You than might change your number. Lie on me for something like that. Let's see who else. Oh, your drunken whore of a friend, Albert. Said that he wants to never stop drinking. That's his New Year's resolution: <laughs> is to never stop drinking. <laughs> Aim high, Albert. Aim high. Well, um, that's why I love him. And yeah, he loves his cosmos. Yeah, man, ain't nothing wrong with that. Angie underscore Zayas says, "Have more motherfucking patience." That sounds like someone who's looking to be more patient. That is what you need more of. Motherfucking patience. Yes, you should add that to your list, Tom. I'm all right. My list is long enough already. All right. Saving all my change, dollars and coins. Ooh, Tanya, I love someone who is about saving her coins. Really? Yes. Really? I think being Pennywise is so freaking good. You think so, maybe in theory. You spend so much money on Grubhub and Postmates and Uber Eats. You were voted which pizza place gave you top 1% earning customer? Drew Nard, did you hear about this? Tommy literally got a message from a company, a food restaurant, that said, congratulations, you're in the top <laughs> tier of ordering the most pizzas out of any of our other customers. It's a decent pizza. It's a it's little a pizza. It's a really serious get, reward. I only get the little one. Slow down, listen to my body, and decrease clutter and stress. Hell yeah, Garcia. 100% decrease clutter and stress what tommy's good at that that means you have to keep your place tidy you have to purge you have to donate stuff you live in a clutter-free environment like that marie yeah Kondo. i'm a minimalist in that regard i i'd rather just get rid of shit you have more of a pack rat mentality mm, i don't think so a hundred percent we've all seen your bathroom what about my bathroom? My bathroom is only for the. I think you're more it's minimalist not for the faint than of me, hearted. but I think that you are a sucker at the lane in the store where they call it like the impulse buy. Yeah, impulse buy. Impulse buy. Yes, very good, baby. You yeah. are a sucker. Yeah, at no, the impulse buy. A hundred percent. You know, and I'm also another big sucker for as seen on TV. Listen, I don't ever, I will never, ever, ever, ever call and order anything. Because like they give don't a have credit. that never. anymore. You're right, but I'm saying I never did that. <laughs> but if I'm in a store... You never, ever do something that doesn't exist. Uh, if, I, if I'm in a store and they have the <laughs> as seen on TV aisle, You're getting I'm him. looking, and there's a good chance that I'm going to walk away with a thing or two. Beyond said to be more business focused. I like that. I think what you need to do, though, is manage our time really well. Put your cell phone down, hop off social, make an appointment for yourself every day. Even if you're working from home, like you have to put your days, your hours or minutes to in like a calendar. Like, oh, is it 1045 and I'm not supposed to be watching Wendy Williams? I'm supposed to be watching my computer screen and finishing my QuickBooks. I could not agree with you more, especially in this new day and age that we're living in. You got to have time set for your day. That's you know, another instance where alarms help, where you can say, all right, from this time to this time, I got to get this done. But you got to be regimented about it. Like you said, you can't you know, say, all right, let me just finish watching Wendy. That's not going to work. You guys, there's so many more good ones. Continuing my health journey, eating better, avoiding sugar, getting sleep, start an ASMR channel for a fun mommy hobby, start my own business. I could definitely get with losing some pounds. I think that it's, you know, eating right. I think that that's something that I definitely need to do. To be the best person possible for my children. They change you for the better. I like that. Yes, one. That's me a good too. One. We really resonate Who's with that? like... Who's that? They'll get a t-shirt. Who's uh, that? Oh, only one certain people that you decide, huh? I yeah. see how it is. Well, I only got so many fucking shirts, One man. and only 
Anne Marie. One and only Anne Marie. You'll get a shirt. I like okay. that one. My son has definitely changed me for the better. I'm a better man. Spend more time with God. I love that. I always want to think that I'm communicating with God and the angels. Lose weight. Quit smoking. Eat more vegetables. Quit smoking. Eat vegetables. Hell yeah. My doctor has an amazing social media page and he reminds us of these. I'm going to shout out health.wealth9. They put such interesting things about anti-inflammatories and just healthy tips, and it's inspiring. And if I could give a shout-out, I'm getting no monetary compensation for this whatsoever, but Kerry Gaynor, for the people out there that are trying to quit smoking, you know, I smoked for 20 years. Dr. Kerry Gaynor. Yeah, I went and sat down with this guy. He's a hypnotherapist. And in Santa Monica, California. So yeah. if you guys want to look him up. And if, you're in the, if you're in the area, you could go sit with him. But if not, if you're out of state, he sells a program that you could buy. It's like a DVD or a CD. Maybe it's on the computer. I actually bought it for a few friends of mine because I, I quit. I, you know, five years ago when the little guy was coming... I haven't had a cigarette since. I'm not. I'll never guys, smoke again Tommy for the rest quit. of my life, no matter what. Tommy quit cold turkey, you guys. Well, no, I went to him successfully went, yeah, with Dr. Gaynor. I went to him. Uh, now I bought this program for a few of my friends. A couple of them have still quit to this day, but a couple haven't. So I'm not going to sit there and say it works for fucking everybody that I know because it doesn't. Some of your friends I, said I don't want to quit. Yeah, you got to really want to for sure. You got to really want to quit. You know, for me, it really worked. And like I said, I'll never smoke again for the rest of my life, no matter what. You know, if you're someone that wants to quit smoking, this might help you. Okay, so for me personally, 2022 is going to be a big year. You know, this is an experiment that I'm looking to put into play for myself and my own personal growth. For me, I'm calling it the power of three. Basically, I can't do it every day. I was thinking about every day, but if I try every day, I think I'm going to fail. So I'm, I'm going to start with every week. In that week, I'm going to do three kind deeds, whether it be holding the door for somebody, buying the guy a cup of coffee behind me. Are you going to write them down? Yeah, I'm going to blog about it. I'm going to, it'll be on the website. My goal is to be a better human, first of all, be a better dad. But, you know, that a year from now that I'm, I'm a more positive person. It's a psychological fact that we do things better in three. It's easy to remember stuff. I don't know why, you know, it's, but it's a fact. So three kind deeds, compliment three people a week. People love to hear compliments. And the third one is to reach out to three people a week. You know, whether it be someone in your phone, whether it be someone on social media, I'll write a blog entry about it. If you guys want to follow it, it's the power of three. It's a dollar to follow. And that's only because, you know, I'm not expecting a bunch of people to follow me. But the ones that do, You're I can use that it. money to buy books for the You're little guys. It, baby. So that's why I'm doing it. I'm into that. I hope that I'm one of the people that you include in your deeds list. You said good deeds. Yeah, but like I can't, you got to mix it up. I can't give you a compliment and a good deed and be like, ah, I'm good. You know what I mean? I told the wife though she had nice shoes and uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? I put a laundry in the in the washing machine. Hey, listen, maybe it is. I haven't worked all of it out yet. We'll see, man. Like I said, a year from now, I hope that I could sit there and look back over the last year and say, one, that I stayed true to it and I kept up at it for the full year. And hopefully it changes my outlook on life. Can I also do the power of three on my own? You can do whatever the fuck you want. I doubt you'll do it. I hope I'm rooting for you. But listen, I hope it spreads like that. I hope that, you know, everybody does it. Like, I think that, you know, if everybody took that time. I want to. To compliment someone, do something nice, and, you know, reach out to somebody. I think that you'd be surprised the world could become a better place, man. You never know. Okay, well, I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. I'm we'll proud. see. I haven't done shit yet. I haven't done shit I yet, mean, but we'll see. you're good at initiative, and you're pretty good with follow-through, too, so... Well, that's the other reason I want to do the blog, because it makes me accountable. It's nice to have accountability. Yeah. Teamwork yeah. makes the dream work. Yeah. Okay, well, I hope everyone is ready for New Year's Eve. We haven't really talked about what your plans are, but we definitely want to hear about your New Year's, so... <laughs> Everybody have the best New Year's ever, Eve. Everyone have the best 2021 transition to 2022. Yeah. <laughs> Love yeah. it. Love you guys. I'm so pumped, and I can't wait to see you guys next year. Happy New Year, everybody. From our family to yours, we really hope that you guys have a, 
a fun New Year's, and we hope that, you know, 2022 is the best year yet. See you guys next year. Thank you guys so much for listening to another episode of Till the Dirt with Tommy and MJ. We're so happy you're coming on this journey with us. It would mean so much to us if you would rate our show, give us five stars, leave a nice comment, and subscribe so that you can stay up to date with all our new episodes. You could also follow us on all platforms at Till the Dirt with Tommy and MJ. See you next week.